We have already learned that light can be bent from its ordinary straight line path by reflection and by refraction. Now we learn another way in which light bends. Any bending of light by means other than reflection and refraction is called diffraction. Diffraction is the bending of light as it passes the edge of an object, creating a fuzzy edge. It also occurs when a wave passes through an aperture. Diffraction occurs for water waves also. Here we see a physiker at a water tank with a partial barrier. She oscillates a meter stick up and down and creates plane waves on the water surface. Water oscillating at the opening acts as a source of waves which fan out from the opening. We save the waves diffract through the opening. Here's top view photos of water diffracting through openings of various sizes. What do these three photos show? They show that the smaller the opening relative to the wavelength, the greater the bending of waves at the edges of the opening. In other words, the smaller the opening, the greater the diffraction. And here's a top view of waves encountering different objects in their paths. In A, we see how the waves spread into the shadow region. In B, where the object is about the same size as the wavelength of waves, we see the shadow is soon filled in. In C, for the same size object, we see minimum diffraction for wavelengths that are short relative to the size of the object. A sharper shadow is cast. Apply this to viewing very small objects with a microscope. For objects about as small as the wavelength of light, diffraction blurs the image. If the object is smaller than the wavelength of illuminating light, any image is lost to diffraction. Objects are best seen for relatively short wavelengths of illuminating light. Less diffraction occurs when the wavelength is small compared with the object being viewed. Let's look at light passing through an opening. When the opening is large compared with the wavelength of light, a sharp shadow is cast, only a bit of fuzziness at the edges. If light is passed through a thin razor-sized slit in a piece of opaque cardboard, the light noticeably diffracts. The sharp boundary between the light and dark areas disappears and the light spreads out like a fan without sharp edges. Diffraction is evident. Light diffracting through a single slit is one thing. Light diffracting through hundreds of closely spaced slits is another. Such an array of slits makes up a diffraction grating. Here's Jill Johnson of City College of San Francisco with an oversized diffraction grating used for classroom demonstrations. Different frequencies of light diffract differently, and a diffraction grating separates light into its many frequency components. Jill compares the light diffracted from helium gas at the left with mercury gas at the right. We see that each element, when made to glow, emits its own pattern of vertical colored lines. Just as a prism separates light into its component colors by refraction, a diffraction grating does the same by diffraction. Yum to both prisms and diffraction gratings. Not only thin slits, but thin ridges produce diffraction of light. Hence the yum colors you see on a CD, which are produced by diffraction. And we see diffraction beautifully apparent in the feathers of peacocks and in the feathers of many birds. When feathers ruffle and colors change, aha, you're witnessing diffraction. Again, any bending of light not due to reflection or refraction is due to diffraction. Yum physics. For the next lesson, we'll treat a related topic, the interference of light. For now, I want to leave you with a question. First, if you're investigating tiny things with a microscope, Diffraction is not your friend. Diffraction blurs your image. Not good. For less diffraction and a clearer image, which color light should you illuminate the object being viewed? Red light or blue light? Until next time, good energy. <laughs>